Hello, good evening and welcome to Holy Trinity Warmwell for evening prayer. It's Tuesday the 20th of March, so we'll be using the common worship order for Passiontide and remembering Cuthbert as a lesser festival, Bishop of Lindisfarne. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be glory and praise for ever. As we behold your Son enthroned on the cross, stir up in us the fire of your love, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and walk with you in newness of life, singing the praise of him who died for us and our salvation. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And we'll read this alternate verses, reading the last together. The royal banners forward go, the cross shines forth in mystic glow, where he in flesh, our flesh who made, our sentence bore, our ransom paid. Though whilst he hung his sacred hut side by soldiers' spear was opened wide, to cleanse us in the precious flow of water mingled with his blood. Fulfilled is now what David told in true prophetic song of old, how God the nation's king should be, for God is reigning from the tree. O tree of glory, tree most fair, ordained those holy limbs to bear, how bright in purple robe it stood, the purple of a Saviour's blood. Upon its arms, like balance true, he weighed the price for sinners due, the price which none but he could pay, and spoiled the spoiler of his prey. To the eternal three in one, let homage meet by all be done. As by the cross thou dost restore, so rule and guide us evermore. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so, turning to the back of the Red Book, if we're following there, for the Psalms, numbers 61 and 64, have been specially selected for their appropriateness for the season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have been warned. 61 and 64. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll read them as usual, leaving a short uh, space to reflect on the prayers that follow in silence. Mm-hmm. You are my refuge, O God. A strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the King, that his years may endure throughout all generations. 
May he sit enthroned before God forever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name, and day by day fulfil my vows. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. to Psalm 64. The righteous shall rejoice in the Lord. Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the gathering of evildoers. They sharpen their tongue like a sword, and aim their bitter words like arrows. <clears throat> that they may shoot at the blameless from hiding places. Suddenly they shoot, and are not seen. They hold fast to their evil course. They talk of laying snares, saying, Who will see us? They search out wickedness and lay a cunning trap. For deep are the inward thoughts of the heart. But God will shoot at them with his swift arrow, and suddenly they shall be wounded. Their own tongue shall make them fall. And all who see them shall wag their heads in scorn. All people shall fear and tell what God has done, and they will ponder all his works. The righteous shall rejoice in the Lord and put their trust in him, and all that are true in heart shall exalt. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The righteous shall rejoice in the Lord. And so back to evening prayer during Passion Tide for the Canticle. Song of Christ's glory. It's almost impossible to read the refrain without wanting to burst into song. But... <laughs> yeah. At the name of Jesus, every, every knee shall bow. bow. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And so, as I invite you to turn up chapter 22 in Jeremiah, I shall read from The Life of Cuthbert by the Venerable Bede, uh, from Kindle Version of Celebrating the Saints. When Cuthbert came to the church and monastery of Lindisfarne, he handed on the monastic rule by teaching and example. Moreover, he continued his custom of frequent visits to the common people in the neighbourhood in order to rouse them up to seek and to merit the rewards of heaven. Some of the monks preferred their old way of life to the rule. He overcame these by patience and forbearance, bringing them round little by little through daily example to a better frame of mind. At chapter meetings, he was often worn down by bitter insults, but would put an end to the arguments simply by rising and walking out, calm and unruffled. 
Next day he would give the same people exactly the same admonitions as though there had been no unpleasantness the previous day. In this way he gradually won their obedience. He was wonderfully patient and unsurpassed for courage in enduring physical or mental hardship. Though overwhelmed by sorrow at these monks' recalcitrance, he managed to keep a cheerful face. It was clear to everyone that it was the Holy Spirit within giving him strength to smile at attacks from without. Such was his zeal for prayer that sometimes he would keep vigil for three or four nights at a stretch. Whether he was praying alone in some secret place or saying psalms, he always did manual work to drive away the heaviness of sleep, or else he would do the rounds of the island, kindly inquiring how everything was getting on, relieving the tedium of his long vigils and psalm singing by walking about. After many years in the monastery, he finally entered with great joy and with the goodwill of the abbot and monks into the remoter solitude he had sought, long sought, so long sought, thirsted after and prayed for. To learn the first steps of the hermit's life, he retired to a more secluded place in the outer precincts of the monastery, not till he had first gained victory over our invisible enemy by solitary prayer and fasting did he take it on himself to seek out a remote battlefield further away from his fellows. The inner Farn is an island far out to sea, unlike Lindisfarne, which is an island in the strict sense of the word only twice a day when cut off by the tide. The inner Farn lies a few miles to the southeast of Lindisfarne, cut off on the landward side by very deep water and facing on the other side out towards the limitless ocean. Cuthbert was the first man brave enough to live there alone. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of his life, this venerable man of God was elected Bishop of Lindisfarne. Following the teaching and practice of the apostles, he adorned his office with good works. He protected the flock committed to him by constant prayer on their behalf, by wholesome admonition, and, which is the real way to teach, by example first and precept later. What a wonderful reading. I enjoyed that. Thank you. That was lovely. Yes. The Venerable Bede. Yes. In modern translation. It does put a different, well not quite a different, but it, it's a different way of speaking about people, and, you know, the work and battling and prayer and stuff, but uh, one of the things I like about these readings is that they encourage me that people had the same experiences and attitude and commitment, whatever we think and make of saints and how we can decide who's a better one than another and all that, but mm. their stories yeah. um, are, I think, worth having. To uh... Absolutely. Thank you. So Jeremiah 22, first five verses and then 13 to 19, if right. that makes sense. Okay. Right. The heading at the beginning of this reading is exhortation to repent. That sounds like Great. Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> Thus says the Lord, go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word. And say, Here is the word of the Lord. O King of Judah, sitting on the throne of David, you and your servants and your people who enter the gates. Thus says the Lord, Act with justice and righteousness, and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed. And do no wrong or violence to the alien, the orphan and the widow nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you will indeed obey this word, then through the gates of this house shall enter the king who sits on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their servants and their people. But if you will not heed these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. 13 onwards, is it? 13 to 19. 13 to 19. Thank you. The heading just prior to this is a message to the sons of <coughs> Joshua. Joshua? Hmm, yeah. Just Josiah, isn't it? Josiah, yes, that'd be right. <laughs> Uh, go back to school. <laughs> uh, woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his upper rooms by injustice, who makes his neighbours work for nothing and does not give them their wages, 
who says, I will build myself a spacious house with large upper rooms, and who cuts out windows for it, panelling it with cedar and painting it with vermilion. Are you a king because you complete in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it is well with him. Eighteen it was end of eighteen. Um, to nineteen. Oh sorry, nineteen. Okay. He judged the cause of the poor and needy, then it was well. Is it not this to know me? says the Lord. Put your eyes and heart but your eyes and heart are only for your dishonest gain, for shedding innocent blood, and for practising oppression and violence. Therefore, says the Lord, concerning King Jerichiah, Jer son of Josiah of Judea, they shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, my brother, or alas, sister, they shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, Lord, or alas, his majesty. With the burial of a donkey he shall be buried, dragged off and thrown out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Is high. Yes. <laughs> it's just as you were reading it, I just thought how extraordinarily contemporary it sounds. And I know that you know it's it's some of the language isn't quite, but basically the prophet has got to tell those in power that unless they look after refugees. Yeah. Children without parents, bereaved, etc. Yeah, um, then, blood. Yeah. then their culture, their way of life, their authority will not continue, not prevail. Mm. Um, he was talking to people actually in Israel, because that's obviously where this was set. Um, and I certainly, my view, um, controversial as it may be, is that yes, Israel is God's place and Israelites are God's people, mm. but only like the prophet here says, if they do as they're bid. That's right. Same That's as the rest right of us. Right the way through the, right think, through the Old yeah, Testament. Yeah. And the New. I, th I think. Yeah. Um, it's, in, it's in letters five miles high right <laughs> the way through. I didn't miss it. Yeah. And then sort of the next bit, which is more like a, a poetry rather than a prose. Um, woe to him who builds his house by injustice and just gives, makes his neighbours work for nothing. I will build a spacious house with upper rooms, put windows in it and colour it all. See them. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, and yes, this is to do with the king, but equally the powerful. Mm. Um, you know, your, your dad, it says, he judged the cause of the poor and needy and it was well. But kind of as for you, your eyes and heart are only on dishonest gain for shedding innocent blood and for oppressing oppression and violence and then right at the last I love that you'll be buried like a donkey and nobody you know stubborn animal no, nobody will say oh dear how sad <coughs> um, which at one level is funny if you're talking about the person you disobeyed but you know the king represents the culture and so our rulers even in this country although it's not addressed to them mm. we as church should be saying sort yourself out look after the people who need to be looked after and if you don't you, can, you know you'll be ridiculed and mocked and the historians will look back on what you've done mm. and judge you harshly and make out that you're a donkey yeah <coughs> that's the candidate for the world for that one <laughs> um, and I guess it's a wake up call to us who should be doing that prophetic stuff too. Second reading then John 11 um, from 45 to the end. John 11, 45 to the end. The subheading 
at the beginning of this reading is the plot to kill Jesus. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the council and said, What are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. Jesus therefore no longer walked about openly amongst the Jews, but went from the town uh, there to a town called Ephraim in the region near the wilderness, and he remained there with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before Pas Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and asked one another as they stood in the temple, what do you think? Surely he will not come to the festival, will he? <coughs> now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who knew where Jesus, where Jesus was, should let them know, so that they might arrest him. Thank you. I'd forgotten, actually, that he'd gone to Ephraim. Oh, yes. I forgotten. yes, I thought that too when that was uh, read. I don't know whether it happens anywhere else, whether we're told specifically. Mm. And um, I always feel very inadequate when we come across names of places because if it's written in, there's a reason for it to have been written in. Mm. And um, you know, there are people whose brains would immediately connect with all the other Ephraim references yeah. in scripture and know, oh yes, that was where so-and-so did something or other. Mm. There, would, uh, there must be a significance to it, um, mm. but uh, I don't know what that is here and now. Um, it's very interesting how um, the political statement, just the sort of the pragmatic political statement, we don't all have to die, we can just kill one man and that would be fine, mm. means in another context with a different understanding that Jesus is the saviour. Yeah, I thought that, so I was... Isn't it? Yeah. It's been a long time since I've read this passage. Yeah, yeah. And I found that interesting. And um, it's also, um, I keep finding myself using the word interesting or intriguing. I'm trying to think of other words to use, but I'm not sure. There are, there are very many. Um, that thinking of, as I have been reading John this time, I've been very aware of it having been written by a persecuted Christian community, Jewish Christian community, fairly late on, yeah. which is why this whole business of the Jews, you know, they, Jesus is Jewish and all his mates were Jewish, so it doesn't quite make sense, this whole, now the Passover of the Jews was near and many of the Jews who'd come with Mary, you know, because mm. um, they're all Jews. Yeah. Um, but if you think of it in terms of this community relating to Jesus mm. and forgetting that he was Jewish and seeing him as a Christian, yeah. um, which we have been guilty of more or less ever since. <laughs> <laughs> To some extent, um, yeah. one can see that's how they felt because they would have had snoops and people picking on them and telling the authorities where they were and looking for opportunities to arrest them and all that. And it makes him being with them that much more comforting and supporting because they know that he is God incarnate and mm -hmm. that they're suffering for him and he's suffered for them. Likewise for us, you know, in our small way, particularly here and now us in England, mm -hmm. we're not usually persecuted as... I'm saying not in rural England for our Christian faith yeah, right. in the same way as our brothers and sisters in, yeah. I don't know, North Africa or yeah. North Korea or wherever you want to. Yeah. Um, but it, 
reading it with that, I am a persecuted minority and this is the leader of my faith and here he is being persecuted like we are, um, makes it, you know, he, he knows what it's like to be us, mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. So it becomes alive. Mm. And that idea of Jesus hiding, for want of a better word, mm. where he remained there with his disciples. So, um, shall we turn back to evening prayer for the responsory? As we respond to uh, where Jesus is, where God is, and what God, Jesus, the Spirit have done for us, that we may be where we are. Mm. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. By his wounds, you have been healed. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Now, I think we've got a, I've got a different refrain to you. Um, you'll probably recognise it, so you can join in quietly if you like. Otherwise, <laughs> I can show you where to find it. Otherwise, we'll join in together when we get to My Soul Proclaims. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. Let us pray. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we look back over the day and thank you for all that has been good about it. Those things, people, places, jobs that have been done and been a blessing where we have been blessed, where we've known ourselves to be um, a blessing to those with whom we've worked or spoken, been with. Where we've been pleased with what we've been able to achieve, just from ourselves and our own judgment, but as others have been pleased and satisfied and have thanked us for what we've done for them where we've been aware of your presence, perhaps other blessings of our life, like our families, our health, our income, our food, the beauty of where we live, and all those good things with which you have gifted us. We thank you for them. We equally look back over the day, and there may have been other occasions which have not gone so well, things that we have left undone, undone or not even half done, not even got round to doing, <clears throat> where perhaps even immediately having something gone well, something may not have done, gone so well, where maybe sickness or pain or isolation or lack of income or some other constraint have hampered us and frustrated or upset us in who we are. Memories perhaps of happier times. Maybe people have overlooked us, misconstrued, accused. And we offer all these difficulties and upsets of the day to you for your healing and your forgiveness.
from open doors. Christian ministry has become very dangerous and difficult in Sudan. We pray for God's protection and fruitfulness for open doors local partners as they work to strengthen the church through training, Bible distribution and community development projects. And whether this suggestion does include South Sudan as well as Sudan, we pray for the people of South Sudan too in like manner. Christian aid theme for the week is just checking my dates the water of life we give thanks for world water day which is apparently Thursday which makes me smile these diary writers who find out all these international days of this and that <coughs> Thursday is world water day and so we pray for the day when everyone has access to safe water. Whilst I'm sure there are projects which we will hear about um, later in the week from Christian Aid, we thank you for Water Aid and all the work that it does and its aims and aspirations to provide clean water and safe toilets. And I uh, forget what their third main aim is, but um, pray for it and organisations like it that seek to provide that simple thing for us that have hot and cold running water on tap literally simply clean safe water for people um, that do not yet have it even in these days mm -hmm. the diocese of salisbury invites us to pray for devises deanery which is a group of parishes and benefices we pray for carol and paul their lay chair and rural dean and they would like to give God thanks for the vacancies filled and for opportunities across the deanery and in their clusters, whatever they are, in developing shared mission and ministry. We pray that all the representatives from the parishes that are involved in that deanery, as both uh, congregation members and ministers, that they will be encouraged as they share their stories with each other and be inspired to continue to fight the good fight. And as usual, we pray for our places in this benefice. For Chilbury Gardens, Church Lane, Gleeford Close, East Farm Lane, Galton, Hollandsmead Avenue, Holworth, Kit Lane, Misery Farm, Moynes Court, Morton Road, Pollards Lane, Ringstead, Wareham Road, Watercombe Farm and Watercombe Farm Cottages in Oermoyne. We pray for your health, wealth and prosperity, your salvation, healing and deliverance on these places where people do not yet know you. We ask that you draw them to faith by all means, by good and bad experiences, not that you would wish the bad on them. We pray that as people learn about Lent and Easter, for whatever reason, maybe picking up a parish magazine or seeing something on the telly or on social media, they'll be inspired to consider your claims and decide how to respond. We thank you that we have the freedom to reject you, but we pray that these will not. We thank you for those who believe in you, who live in those addresses, and we pray that they will be an inspiration to those around and about them as they pray, as they share their life experiences and how your presence with them has made that different, more positive perhaps, more sustainable, more like living than just survival. Pray for the businesses that serve those addresses, they will continue to prosper and thrive and so be able to provide goods, services and employment. We pray for people who are struggling, that they will have help offered and be able to receive it, be moved to ask where they need, and that that will be offered by Christian and other agencies, professional and voluntary. And that those who live in those neighbourhoods for whom life is going well, that they'll be moved to share with those around them for whom life is not going so well, and that that will strengthen community and where it's done in your name, build your kingdom. And so we pray for Helen, Graham, Nicole, Eric, Liz, Christine, Leslie, Faye, Peter, Elizabeth, David, Mark, Jan, Brian, Steph and Julia, and others we know for whom things are not going so well. We pray.
pray that they will be moved to call on you and be encouraged as they know you to hear them and to respond. We pray that an awareness and a knowledge of your presence and involvement will give them hope. We pray for their spouses, partners, family and friends, advisors and all who support them through their difficulties, whatever they may be, <clears throat> that they too will have courage and wisdom and the support that they need in their turn. We pray for your provision, whether it's in terms of health, or finance, accommodation, relationship. We thank you that you are our shepherd and seek to provide. And finally, we thank you for what was good in the lives of Morris, Michael, Cynthia, Julia's dad, Leslie, Richard, and all others who have recently died in whatever circumstance, through accident, sickness, neglect, violence, even at their own hands. We remember all whose years mind falls at this time, giving thanks for Cuthbert, once again, one of those exemplary saints who walked and talked and lived amongst fractious people, but was a man of peace, and that that could be seen by those in his day and today. Mm -hmm. We pray for all who have served you here, those who we have known and loved, but see no longer. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And we bring to you all who mourn, whether the loss of a loved one or a change in circumstance. Even those who are facing death, perhaps, and find their lives, their opportunities curtailed, and so face that circumstance with frustration and sadness. We pray that we all will know you to be the way, the truth, and the life. And in the light of our readings and in other ways we know that you have been this way before and that you know the challenges of human life you know the fear of facing death but we thank you that we know in you the end of the story and that that how in however a small and distorted and difficult way will nevertheless be an encouragement and a source of support for those who are going that way with you. Father, well, thank you for the opportunity of meeting in this lovely old church again. <coughs> Give thanks to the, uh, the locals that keep this place up together and safe. Yes. Give thanks for the vision that they've got in this community. Just ask for you be with them and support them in what they try to do. Yes. Um, because The church on this earth are people. You know, buildings are one thing, but the church in itself is you living in a community of people. But it's also very convenient to have a nice place to meet, where worship can take place where companionship can blossom, where your love can be shown and be experienced in so many ways. So I just bring those people to you, Lord, mm. at this time, and make a way for them. Think of on Thursday, International Water Day. Just give a thanks for the water projects that the Salyan did last year, especially, um, that really did break all records um, in providing 
water tanks and fresh water in many a difficult area. Water is a very practical thing. It keeps people healthy and safe and it gives them time to experience your love in their lives should they choose to look for it. So thank you for the water of life yes. that you gave us and that you stand for. We as humans live our lives with a hole in so many ways where in many ways God should reside and many people run around in circles looking looking trying to fill that void and, and not really succeeding so just a personal thank you for entering my life and, so, and Rev Dom's here and so many other people but often we don't see the way in the, initially which you're going to lead I know when I came to the Mercy Seat many, many years ago and I was doing all sorts of activities Major Lefebvre at that time says sort of watch top size and it will come always to that effect and yes, it does you have held my hand and you have led me through a path often a path that we cannot see and you've led me down alleys which are not obvious, but have all been to my benefit mm. and to a greater love of you and a gentle, improving, great, greater involvement in things. So I give thanks for all those people in our congregations, in all our Christian congregations, whether they be here or whether they have been um, guided into another path um, with a different congregation or whatever. I just ask that you be with them, and guide them and bless them and give them a richness of life in whatever way that um, they are experiencing your love. And may they not be as the grain would be on a dusty, hard, rocky surface, but may find deep soil and water, or your water of life, to make them go straight and strong and bread free. Just as you see my precious name. Hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, who called your servant Cuthbert from following the flock to follow your son and to be a shepherd of your people, in your mercy grant that we, following his example, may bring those who are lost home to your fold. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.